Today I'm going to show you how to use the event day registration tool in the Zap Event admin system. The goal of this video is to show you how to set up and use the event day tool. So whether you're a race director, committee member, or volunteer, you can feel confident about using event day to take registrations the day of your next event. To get started, log into your Zap Event admin account. For some of you who are not on the organization's account, that's okay. You'll just need the director or some other committee member to log in for you and navigate to the marketing page. We'll see the configure event day registration. Here is the event day setup page. Most of you will not have to do anything with this page, but I wanna give you a quick tour of what the page and setup looks like so you have a better understanding of how event day works and in case you have to change any of the settings the day of the event. Here you will see the activate button. This is going to activate event day and allow people to start registering for your event. If I click activate, now my event registration link along with my check-in page become live URLs. The event registration link is what participants are going to use to register for your event. Here you can see I clicked on it and now the registration process can begin. We also offer a unique QR code for each event for participants to register on their own device. For those of you who are not familiar with a QR code, many of the smartphones or tablets have QR readers on it and participants can use their phone, scan that QR code, and it will bring them right to the registration page. Below that, you will see the check in page link. For those of you who are checking in participants the day of the event, this is the page you're going to be most interested in. Here you can see event registration statistics. You can see that there were four people that registered before the event. So far we have zero participants that have registered using the event date page and none of our participants have checked in. When you're checking in a participant, you can search for their name here and you can use partial names. We recommend that in case Sam registered as a Samuel or John registered as a Jonathan. They're not going to pop up if you type Jonathan, but it's a John. So here we just recommend doing partials for the name. And I'm going to click search. And here you can see Rich Mueller, who registered for the 5K event. If I click on the event, I can see information about the participant, and I can also see payment type. So if they pay with a credit card or cash. And I can check in the participant. And if I checked in someone by mistake, I can also click cancel this check-in. But so I'm going to check him in. Here you can see a Y, which stands for yes, under attend it. And if I click to refresh my totals, I'll now see that one person has checked in and that we have three more people that we're waiting to check in. Here is a list of participants. You're going to see the last 10 participants who have registered on this list. Just makes it easier for you to find them. So if you have someone who registered immediately after they have successfully registered for your event, you can pull up the check-in screen. Let's say they were Megan Jones. Click there and check them in. If you do not see the participant on this list, that's when you'll want to search first and last name for the participant. All right, let's jump back to the event day registration page. Here you'll see choose the event activities. These are the activities that you are going to allow for participants to register for the day of your event. So maybe you're not going to allow for student registrations or team registrations the day of the event. You're going to uncheck the box. And now participants are only going to have the option to register for the 5K for $20. You also have the option to check or uncheck payments you will want to accept the day of the event. So maybe you only want to accept 
credit or debit cards and not have your volunteers deal with cash or check, then you would uncheck this box. Or maybe you only want to accept checks and cash payments, so you would check that box and deselect the credit and debit box. Or if you're going to allow participants to pay with any type of payment, you'll leave both of those boxes checked. Next to the configure questions section, here you'll see a list of the questions asked by default to all participants. You'll see three different columns. This is the included, required, and show column. The included column will be optional questions for participants to answer. The required column will be required for participants to answer in order to complete the registration. And the show column will be displayed to your volunteers and staff members for them to see when checking in the participants. So for example, we automatically require participant to enter their first name, last name, and email address. That's the only information that Zap Event requires a participant to enter in order to register. But you might also want to know their phone number and their birth date. But maybe you don't care about their mailing address or company or gender. So I'm going to choose to deselect those. I can still include them in my registration. So if a participant wishes to answer them, they can, but they don't have to. And under show, I want, when I'm checking a participant, I would want them to show their first last name, email address, and their bib number. Now, if there's any more questions that were on the original registration page that you would like to include, you can click the add more questions button. Here you can see there's a t-shirt size question and a team name question. Well, since I'm not accepting team registrations, I don't care about the team name. So I'm going to leave that off. But I'm still going to allow people to get a t-shirt when they register. And so I'm going to click add. And here now, as part of the registration process, they'll now see the t-shirt size. I'm going to include it. I'm not going to require a participant to answer it because maybe they don't want one. And I'm also going to show it when I check in a participant. Here's going to be a custom thank you message that you can send to the participant. It will appear on their screen for only a brief five seconds before it automatically disappears. So this is a good place to enter um, if they need to go to the next table to get checked in or to get their bib number, t-shirt, anything you want the participants to know. Keep it short, you only have 100 characters and it only displays for five seconds. So now that I've showed you the setup page, I'm gonna jump in and we're gonna put through a practice registration. Here I'm gonna click the registration link. I'm gonna select the activity continue and here you'll see all the personal information and participant information the red asterisks mean that it is a required question here I'm going to enter my name I don't need to enter the company name or gender I will enter my birth date phone number I did make that required so I'll type in Zap events phone number and then an email address. Then lastly, I'm going to choose, I'm going to get a medium t-shirt. I'm going to click continue. This is going to be at the payment screen or the checkout screen. Here participants have the option to add an additional registration to their order. So if families registering, they don't have to enter their payment information in multiple times. They only need to enter it once. So here you'll click here to add another registration to the order. If for some reason you need to delete or edit an order, the participant can click the edit screen and go back, see their information, and maybe I want a small t-shirt. Click small, continue. So here I have my order. It's $20. I'm going to choose to pay with cash. Check out. Thank you for registering. Perfect. And this is where your custom message would appear. As you see, it's just for a brief time. Now that I've registered, you might have a different person checking in participants. So I just registered for the event. I'm going to jump into the check-in line. I'm going to collect my t-shirt and my bib. So now you would have a volunteer that would have the check-in screen up on their tablet or laptop, whatever devices. 
If I search for my name here, I just entered it. So you can see I'm going to be the top name listed. But otherwise I can search. So I'll do partials, search, and there's my name. I'm going to click on the 5K registration. And now, here you can see if you want to verify the person. You can see it's my first and last name. Make sure the email address is the same. And then I have t-shirt size, small. So now I can have a volunteer give the participant a small t-shirt. I can also assign them a bib number. So now I can say they are going to be bib number 230 or whatever's the next bib on the pile. And I'm going to say, and then they paid me $20 in cash. Check in. And now I'm all set. So the participant now has registered gotten checked in, got their bib number assigned, and their t-shirt all within less than 30 seconds. Obviously, this is going to take a little bit of time, depending on how many participants you have registering for an event. We recommend for larger events to have multiple people at a registration table to allow people to register the day of the event. And then once they've successfully registered for the event, have them go to the next table over where you have more volunteers on the check-in page to check in participants. We highly recommend you saving the event day registration page as either a bookmark or as your home page, just in case a participant accidentally exits out of the browser. This will allow you to easily navigate back to the registration page. If you have any questions, please contact the support team. You can email us at support at zapevent.com or give us a call at 612-548-5648.